I got one, one small snippet of a verse that I want to share with you, and then, uh, and then we'll, just, we'll just go ahead and, and have some fun. But Luke chapter 14, Luke chapter 14, verse 1, we're starting a brand new collection of talks called Room. And, and really the idea is in 2024, which is coming very quickly, everybody, uh, 2024, here, here's my heart for you, is that you would make room for what God wants to do in your life. And, and in order for us to make room, there are some things that we have to let go of, and there's other things that we got to make room by, by pouring ourselves out. And so we're going to be looking at different things from now until Christmas Eve, and that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to talk about how no one, or how some people made room for what God wanted to do uh, by, by the birth of Jesus Christ. And so Luke chapter 14, here's our theme verse for today. It says this, one time when Jesus went for a Sabbath meal, he went to a dinner party, everybody, uh, with one of the top leaders of the Pharisees, all the guests had their eyes on him, watching his every move. I just want you to, I want that just to sink in real quick. Jesus went to a dinner party with all the top-notch leader of leaders, and it says that everybody was watching how he was going to respond at this dinner party. This morning, if you're taking notes, I want to talk to you briefly from the subject. There's room at the table. There's room at the table. Let's pray and then we'll get started. Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for what you've already done in this place, what you're doing in this place. God, I pray that you would just continue to move. Holy Spirit, you are a guest of honor this morning. We say that you, we want you to do whatever you want to do. We want to leave your change. We want to leave here better, but not for our own benefit, but so that we can change the world around us. And so we thank you for that. We love you. In Jesus' name, come on, everyone, say it. Amen. amen, amen. So I don't remember everything growing up, but I do remember a few things. In fact, one thing in particular, I remember that my parents loved having people over. My parents were so social. They, they always loved having, having guests at our house. They loved feeding people. Um, I remember there were times where uh, it was Thanksgiving and my dad would tell people, hey, if you don't have a place to go, we'll make room for you at our house. And, and I just grew up, that, that's what it was. It was just a very social house. My parents loved people. Now, if I can be completely honest with you, I wasn't so much down for everyone coming over. Now, it wasn't because I didn't love people. I love people. But the reason why I had an issue with people coming over is because I understood that there was a process of preparation that would take place before people set foot in my house. Ooh, see, some of y'all, you don't know what I'm talking about because your parents are like, hey, come over. And it was just chaos. Not my house. My mom, she, like, my, my house was clean already. But, like, it was extra clean when people came over. Like, it was, I mean, it was clean, clean. She would be vacuuming. Y'all, she would have the, the, the lines in the carpet. You know, like, when you have that perfect, and it wasn't zigzag. It was like, <laughs> My sister and I, we would just, we'd be like, whoa, we were kids. Try to step on the carpet. Don't you step on that carpet. <laughs> we're like, Why? Like, it was just a clean house. And, and so whenever guests came over, we were like, okay, mom, dad, they're going to make us, like, clean everything even more. So, so it's not that I didn't like people. It was just there was a process that I understood. But if I was honest, there, there, was, a, there was one thing in particular that, that was just, like, it was, <sighs> my mom had this philosophy that if people were going to come over for dinner, Everybody should have a seat at the table. And my dad and I, I vividly recall, we'd have people come over and, and my mom's like, we got to expand the table. And my dad and I like, <sighs> like we were like, come on. Normal people are like, hey, there's no room here. You can go sit on the couch and eat your food. Not my house. And my parents, to this day, they had this round table that expands. And so, like, usually it sits like four people, but when we had guests over, mom was like, y'all need to expand the table. And my dad was like, 
because you had to like get someone on each side and you have to pull this thing apart. And it was rusty, so like it's like you got tugging it, and then we'd have to carry these these different like uh, they're called leaves, I think. And uh, everyone's like, "Yeah, duh, <laughs> you're so dumb," you know. Like so, we had to grab we had to grab these leaves out, right? And we had to place them on the table, and then. You had to push it together. And so if you don't time it right, like the table shifts. So you got to count like one, two, three, push it. And then they were pushing it and they would get stuck. In, and like if you were not like paying attention, you put your finger there. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. But, 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 but what it would do is it would expand this table so that whenever people came over, they had a seat at this table. And what I love about, what I didn't understand back then, but I understand now, my mom understood the value of the table. She understood what the table signified. She understood that there was a value that you give somebody. When you say, here is the table, there's a place for you at this table, as opposed to sitting on the couch. My mom understood something that I didn't understand at the very beginning, but I understand now. I understand the value of making room at the table. Now, I was thinking about this, like why my parents would, would go through this idea of making room at the table. And really, it boils down to this. They loved being social. They loved people. They wanted to make sure that everyone had a seat. And so I was thinking about this idea of like being social and loving people and, and just being around people. And I realized this, that the more that I studied scripture, specifically the New Testament, the more that I had discovered that Jesus was a social butterfly. And because he was a social butterfly, he loved people. And because he loved people, he was willing to make room for people. And here's the crazy part, is that Jesus didn't just love people, but people actually loved Jesus. In fact, people were actually drawn to Jesus, which this is not in my notes, but if we are pushing people away instead of drawing them near to us, like there's something that we need to examine about ourselves. Because if we're representing Jesus who drew people to him, and if Jesus dwells inside of us, well, then by his very nature, there should be something pulling that should be pulling people towards us. And so Jesus, he was a very social person and everybody, not everybody, everybody <laughs> was trying to get Jesus to hang out at, his, at, his, at their party. Everybody. Like you read throughout uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Gospels, everybody was like, yo, Jesus, come. Come to my dinner party. And Je I love Jesus because he didn't care who he was going. Like he didn't care what house he was going to. He was like, party? There. <laughs> like there, there's instances where, where Jesus, he's having dinner at what, what the text says, reputable sinners. <laughs> I don't know what a reputable sinner is, but I have some ideas, <laughs> you know? And Jesus, he's over there like, he's eating with these reputable sinners. These people who like everyone else is like, oh man, how are you? In fact, in fact, and this is crazy. One time, Jesus was eating at this reputable sinner's home with a whole bunch of other reputable sinning people at this table. And, and the Pharisees, the real religious people, they were looking and they were looking in, and they saw inside that Jesus was eating dinner with these people. Oh, they flipped the lid. They, they were like, they were like, what is he doing? And they were calling him out. Why are you eating with these people? Like, don't you know you'll get sin germs? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. but <laughs> And, and so, so Jesus, he's like, he hears him, right? And because Jesus, he has no preference. He's like, if you're going to feed me, I'm going to be there. So Jesus is like, okay, how about this? I'll go to your house too. And so what we read in Luke chapter 14 and verse 1 is an instance in where Jesus was, had decided, hey, I am going to go to dinner at a Pharisee's home. 
Because again, Jesus didn't care. He, he'd go anywhere and then have dinner with him. And so in Luke chapter 14, the verse that we read at the very beginning, Jesus is invited to a Pharisee leader's dinner party. And so Jesus, is, he's here and he's eating and, and, and he's invited. And scripture says that anybody who was anybody was at this party. The who's who of religious people were there. Like everybody that mattered was there. And what's interesting, during this time period when people would, uh, would, would, would throw these, 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 these dinners, is they, they would usually, it would be in the outer courtyard, and they would have like these very long tables. And the people would come, and they would, they would sit around the table, and it would just be like, you know, like when they sit you next to people in the airline, you're in the middle chair, you're like, you know, like that's what it was, you're trying to get... <laughs> you know, trying to pick up your food with the fork, but you can't move. Like, it was just, like, really tight because everybody was there. Like, every, every important person was at this party. Now, I don't know if you've ever been invited to a place where you're just like, yo, I'm just happy y'all invited me. <laughs> You know, like you kind of feel like imposter syndrome. You're like, I'm just here. I'm just going to eat and I'm going to smile and I'm, gonna, I'm just happy. I'm content with, the, you know, that I'm here. And so I'm reading this story, you know. And remember, it says that, that everyone's eyes are on Jesus. They're, 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 they're focused on what Jesus is doing. And so I'm thinking as I'm reading the story, if I'm Jesus, I'm just going to lay low. I'm going to be happy I'm here. I'm going to be happy that I actually got a seat at the table, that I'm sitting here. Even though it's super crowded, I'm just lucky to be here. That's what I'm thinking if I'm Jesus. But Jesus does something so bizarre. Jesus, he, he responds to the, the environment in which he's in. And I want to read what Jesus awkwardly says at the dinner table. Check this out. Luke chapter 14, that was the stage. Luke chapter 14 says this. This is Jesus. He says this. The next, then he turned to the host. The next time you put on a dinner, don't just invite your friends and your family and your rich neighbors. Hello. The kind of people who will return the favor. He says, invite some people who never get invited out. The misfits from the wrong side of the tracks. Clearly, this is a message translation. Uh, <laughs> you're like, wow, this is so modern. <laughs> he says, and uh, the wrong side, you'll be, watch this, in experience and in, in a blessing. You'll be in experience, you'll be and experience, there we go, John, a blessing. Okay. This is crazy. Jesus, he's chilling. He has a seat at the table. Everybody who's anybody's at this table. All the religious leaders. All those people that are like the real brains are sitting there. And Jesus is like, I'm going to say something. And we're like, oh my gosh. And Jesus says, uh, he says, he says, hey, this is a great, great party. It's so cool that you, you know, your, your daddy's here, your mama's here, uh, your baby's daddy's here. You know, like, <laughs> well, it's so cool that your, 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 your rich neighbors are here. Jesus is like, I'm glad. This is so cool. Everybody's here. And every, I, if, if I'm like the religious leader, I'm sitting there and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Good job, host. You invited all the right people. And then what we discover you're going to love this, or you're going to hate this. We discover that Jesus is more concerned with who is not at the table than who is at the table. Because then all of a sudden, he's like, he's like, I'm glad everyone's here, but next time you throw a party. He said, along with these people, make sure to invite, make sure to make room for those who are not yet here. To which the room, shh, wait, 
is he calling us out? Is he saying, I, I, I don't know how to throw a party? And then he sits down. <laughs> this amazes me, everybody. Because what we discover about Jesus that we can easily forget is that Jesus is always down to make room at the table for people because he loves people. Now, the reason why I bring this up is, is because I, I begin to, as I was reading this story, I was like, oh, there's a lot of similarities. Here's this dinner party, people hanging out. They were all like religious people, you know. I'm like, kind of sounds like a church. Whole bunch of like people, like I love discovery because we got people like of all different walks and, and then everyone's on a different journey, but, but like everyone's sitting at this table, you know, and I'm like, well, what, what, if, what if this was through the lens of, of like what a church is like? Now, I, I want to submit to you this morning, what if the church specifically, because we are at discovery this morning, what if the table was represented by the church? And if we put the same principles into place with, with the table as we do the church. So this idea of making room at the table for people. Now, I want to illustrate this, and then I can have uh, Janice come up, Pastor Janice, and then we're just going to have a little bit of fun this morning. And uh, just, I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, you want to get that aside? And then I have a seat for you, Jay. I have a seat for you. I do. I thought ahead. I have a seat. There you go. Actually, can you sit right here? Awesome. I like sitting next to the keyboard. I don't know why. It just makes me feel more holy. Um, so, so I was thinking about this. Like, what if, what if the table was, uh, was like the church? This idea of making room at the table for people. In fact, in fact, this, this table right here, uh, in 2013, my wife and I, this is not my wife. This is not my wife, if you're new. <laughs> Remember, she was wearing orange pants, okay? <laughs> uh, that was awkward, sorry. So, so, okay, focus, focus, focus. So, so, 2012, my wife and I were like, hey, we feel like God is calling us to start a church. And before we launched in 2014, we, we had, we got 16 people, 17 people, eight, maybe 18 people. There's 18 people that were like crazy enough to like say, hey, yeah, let's make room. Let's, let's create, let's set a table and make room for people. Janice was one of those people. And so here we are, we're sitting at this table, but we have room. We have another setting. And so in 2014, February 9th, this coming year, we're going to celebrate 10 years, everybody. Yeah. And so, so in 2000, uh, 2014, February 9th, we opened, opened our doors. First worship experience ever. And uh, we're like, hey, come on in. And it was amazing. And actually, during this time, Pastor Mike, you can come up. You might want to grab that chair, too. <laughs> we're like, hey, bring your own chair. Um... Mikey was there for our very first worship experience. And he came and he visited and we had space for him. That was amazing. I'm glad we made room for you, sir. Thank you. And so, so here's the table and we were so excited. And then, uh, and then 2000, so we were, we were portable for almost six years. We were set up, tear down at the community center. It was hell. And, um, <laughs> but we did it because we wanted to make room for people. And, uh, and, and so 2014, and then 2019, God made a way for us to sign the lease on this space right here. And we were, woo, we were excited. Some of you know the story. We were excited. We met January and February 2020 in this thing called COVID. You probably didn't hear about it. Uh, happened in March of 2020, and we shut our doors. 
Now, here's what's interesting, is that that automatically created space for people. Because we had plenty of space. <laughs> no, nobody wanted to come to the building. So we had so much space. And so, so we're like, okay, that's cool. And we, uh, they were part of, of the rebuild of what we did. And then, um, and then in 2022, July of 2022, something crazy happened. We're doing our series at the movies. And people just started showing up out of nowhere. Some of you were part of that 2022 of July. You came to at the movies and like y'all just stayed. And it was crazy. We're like, whoa. We're like, we're so excited. But here's the problem. Who, who's my other person? That's, okay. There it is. Steve. Here's Steve. And, uh, and here it is, 2022. And, uh, and then, and then a few months fast forward. Okay. I promise I'm getting somewhere. F a few months fast forward in um, February and March of 2023. For five weeks, everybody, there was standing room only in this room. We had people, yeah, we had people waiting in the lobby. We had people, our pastors, like, getting up, giving their seat. We had one pastor use the restroom, and when they came back, her seat was gone. Like, it was crazy. People were waiting in the, in the nursery room. They were waiting for five weeks, and we had this decision to make. Do we enjoy what we already have or do we make room for people? We had a choice. We said, do, do we be like Jesus who was like, hold on, I understand that this party here is amazing, but there are people who are not yet here that need to be here. Or do we have the mindset of the Pharisees? That's like, hey, I'm content. <laughs> I got my, you know. And so Steve, you can come up, Steve, and Steve's waiting right there on the steps. Yeah, you don't need to bring your chair. And, uh, and he's waiting there, and, and uh, he's looking, and, he, and he's wondering, man, is there room at the table for me? And so we had this internal discussion with our pastoral team and our leadership team, some of our, our dream team, those people that serve, and we said, hey, um, should we make room for more people, or are we cool with where we're at? And unanimously, they said, let's make room for more people. And so they started making room for more people. Go ahead and we're going to make room for, for Steve. And, and they, were, they were doing what they had to do. They, we, we, we collectively said, we will make room for people. And I love it. Because as they made room... They're, they're doing all kinds of work, preparation to get there. See, because when you make room, so it's going to be inconvenient for a little bit. When you make room, that's going to call you out of being uncomfortable or being comfortable. When you make room, it's gonna, it's gonna take it's gonna take work for people to say, "Hey, I'm gonna make room. We can put it back here. Let's put it right here. We're gonna make room for people to be here and to sit down." And then all of a sudden, now Steve, he's like, "Oh, look, they made room for me. They made room for me at the table." Because remember, there's the table's significant because a room at a spot at the table signifies that you are valued. It signifies that we've been waiting for you, that we've been expecting you. And so, so here's this room at this table. We got, we work for excellence, so we're going to put that right there. And, and then, but it creates more space for more people. So then Mariah comes along and she's looking and she's like, I wonder if there's room for me at this place called Discovery. And they're like, yes, well, there is. And she comes along and we still got room for more people. Now, here's why I'm telling you this, okay? And then I'm going to end. Here's why I'm telling you this. Because I think that God is doing something currently that is going to challenge us to make more room. There's so many things that are going on behind the scenes that if I told you, you would be, you would be so shocked but God is doing something and he's saying, hey, I need you 
to make room for more people. And it's not because we're trying to grow this church, but it's because we want to model Jesus. And here's the thing. When we have a seat at the table, it signifies something. But oh, how we have to be careful that once we have a seat at the table, that we become content that we become less like Jesus, more like the Pharisees who are like, this is cool. We don't need anybody else here. There's no room for you here. And if we're not careful, we will forget that at one point, we were the person over here watching a Sunday morning online, wondering, I wonder if they have room for me at this church. And then you... You're like, man, then, then, you, then you, we forget that at one point we, we came here on a Sunday morning and the people out there were greeting us saying, hey, we're so glad that you're here. We've been expecting you. What? That's crazy. I'm my We've been waiting for you. We've been praying for you. We can easily forget that at one point Jesus graciously use this church to rekindle hope in a situation that you thought was hopeless. Oh, how easy it is to forget that at one point we stepped foot through these doors and Jesus used this place to refuel that joy that you thought was lost. Oh, how easy it is to forget how it was when I was over here, when I didn't have a place at the table, and to forget how it felt on the outside, wishing and hoping and praying that there was room for me at this table. And so as the band can come up, and you guys are, you can stay here because I just, I don't know. It's like my own personal cheering section. <laughs> oh, man, that was weird. <laughs> this idea of making room at the table. Here's what I, why I think this, this message is so relevant to each and every person in this room. Because each and every one here, at one point or another, was like I said, that person wishing and hoping that they had room for me at this table. And you're sitting here today because someone that is currently here or has been here in the past was willing to make room for you. Now, I always want to give you guys something to, to go away with. And, and so some of you guys are like, what? How? I came here for a message of hope and that I can conquer. And so, so here's my little three nuggets for you guys real quick. So, so you feel like you got your money worth this morning. <laughs> like making room for the table is significant. And here's why. Number one, when I make room at the table, it expands my faith. When I'm willing, and I'm going to explain how, how you can join us in, in making room at this table. So when I make room at the table, it expands my faith. Second thing, here, here's why the second reason it's important that we, that we posture this is because, and this is probably the most important, so this should have been number one. This will be number one for next worship experience. <laughs> that making room at the table is an eternal payoff not a now payoff think about this 
every person that steps foot through these doors, our goal is to shine Jesus to them, share the love of Jesus with them in hopes that they would say, man, I need this Jesus in my life. Imagine how valuable, someone told me this, imagine how valuable a soul is when both the devil and God are after it. This is eternal. We don't have, listen, I don't have time to just play church. Some of us, we grew up in a church where it was just, it was like, let's just go to go and, and let's just be there and check it off our list. I don't got time for that. You don't have time for that. This, there's eternal ramifications for what we are doing on a Sunday morning in this place. So it's not about people, but it is about people. And here's the third reason why making room at the table is so important. is because making room at the table, it, it causes me to have to empty myself out. And when I empty myself out, it allows an empty vessel for God to pour into. Could it be that the reason some of us feel stuck with where we are in our relationship with Jesus is because we are not pouring ourselves out. Therefore, every time it feels like, like every time God's pouring into us, we can't tell because we're still full. So making the room at the table is important. Now, at my house, when we have, now we have people, and here's what's crazy, guys. I'm as, I'm as, as clean as my mom. My kids hate it. They can't stand it. And so, but, but here, here it is. When, when we have people come over our house, here's what's crazy, is, uh, is um, if, if you are a guest at the house and you're like, hey, can I bring anything? Here's my response. Don't do a thing. Just come. We just want you to hang out with us. We're just glad that you're hanging out with us. And then my family hears and they're like, oh, you don't need us to bring it. I'm like, no, hold on. <laughs> I'm like, you got the chips. You got the soda pop. You got the rib. You know what I'm saying? And then we're eating. We're at the table. When we're done, our guests, are, they're always, and I love this, they're like, hey, can we help clean the kit? No, sit down. And then my family's like, oh, we can't. No, no. We're serving. We're. Here, here's why I'm saying this. There's a different mentality between guests and family. And here's what I'm asking this morning. That as we prepare to make room for what God wants to do next in this place, that you would move from guest to family. Now, if this is your first time, you still are our guest. <laughs> you're like, oh my gosh, you're so aggressive here. <laughs> and here, here's, how, here's how I'm asking for you to do this. Just as you saw these people set the table to make room, we need people to help set the table. We need people to serve. Here's what I'm asking. I'm gonna be so bold right now. I'm asking, we have a team of people, production, who serves every single Sunday. They never complain. They always say, hey, whatever you need, we'll do. But I would love to get rotation in there for them. There's the band who's been so faithful, but they serve every single Sunday. I would love to get rotation in for them. And so here's what I'm asking. And there's other areas, the kids and so many different places. But what I'm asking is that today you would make a conscious decision to say, hey, I am moving from a guest mentality to a family mentality so that I can help make room at this table for other people. And here's our commitment to you. We would love for you to only serve twice a month. That's it. 
on a Sunday morning to help create space for this, for this to make room. And the second, second thing is in the same way like people bring, bring their, their, their chicken wings or their whatever it is, we, we, we wanna be faithful with, with serving, but also with bringing what God has so graciously given us with our resources. Tell you what, there is nothing more that can clinch or, 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 or stop a movement than resources. And we have always said we will move at the generosity of this church. And friends, I'm telling you, what God is doing in the doors that he's opening, it's going to require us to move from guest to family. And so today, again, this is America, you can do what you want. But on that QR code in front of you, also at the next or the Connect Hub out there, you can scan it. There's a list of different areas for you to serve. And my challenge to you, if you've been here for any stretch longer than two weeks, <laughs> this is not a first time guest message, is it? <laughs> As we're saying, hey, we, we want you to, to join what we're doing, to make room at the table for those who are not yet here, because that's what Jesus would have done. That's what he's challenged us to do.